This video was voted for by patrons of Questions for Science. Hydrogen peroxide is the simplest peroxide molecule found in nature. It's composed of two oxygen atoms bound to each other called a peroxide group, and one hydrogen atom bound to both oxygen atoms. So get it? Hydrogen peroxide. Oh wow, wow. huh, that makes sense. Yeah. It has a bunch of applications. It's used in rocket propellant, in cosmetic products, and most commonly as a disinfectant. But one thing hydrogen peroxide is not is a health supplement. Some people believe, and quite strongly to be frank, that hydrogen peroxide is this amazing panacea that's able to kill off all kinds of viral infections like herpes and HIV, enhance your energy level, and increase the oxygen concentration in your blood. All of this stems really from two ideas. The fact that hydrogen peroxide is a disinfectant and that it contains two oxygen atoms. Yeah, these two reasons are why people think hydrogen peroxide therapy works. But, I mean, come on, if you're gonna be drinking hydrogen peroxide, you might as well be drinking Hydrogen peroxide is an oxidizing agent, and oxidizing agents make great disinfectants. They work by bonding their oxygen atoms to other molecules known in a process as oxidation. This oxidation changes the molecule's structure, giving it different properties, which is how peroxide kills bacteria. Okay, so here's the bacterial membrane. It holds the bacteria together and keeps the cytoplasm and organelles safe. When the peroxide comes in contact with the membrane, it splits in half, making a very unstable molecule called a free radical. Because it's unstable, it needs to become stable very quickly. It pulls the hydrogen atom from one of the bacterial membrane lipids, but now the lipid contains a free radical which, again, is very unstable. So it takes a hydrogen from a neighboring lipid, causing that lipid to form a free radical. As you can imagine, this creates a very destructive chain reaction. Now, just add a ton more hydrogen peroxide and the entire membrane would become dismantled, causing cytoplasm and organelles to break apart and leak from the bacteria. However, this doesn't happen in your body when you drink hydrogen peroxide. It sounds like people think it works similar to antibiotics, but it doesn't. When you take antibiotics, they dissolve in your stomach and get absorbed into your blood through your intestines. From there, the antibiotics circulate throughout your body until it reaches the colonized bacteria. Hydrogen peroxide can't do this in the body. When you ingest it, it's immediately broken down upon contact with your cells. This is because our cells contain a special enzyme called catalase, which breaks down the peroxide into water and oxygen. This explains why when you put peroxide on an open cut, it fizzles and bubbles up, because the cells are converting it into water and oxygen. Our bodies carry the catalase enzyme because we produce a very small amount of our own hydrogen peroxide in our cells, stored in special organelles called peroxisomes. Peroxisomes recycle fatty acids in the body and use the hydrogen peroxide to do so via oxidation. Catalase is then brought in to recycle the hydrogen peroxide so it doesn't damage the cell after the fatty acids are metabolized. And also, the catalase enzyme has one of the highest turnover rates of all biological enzymes in the human body. It's capable of converting over a million hydrogen peroxide molecules into water and oxygen in one second meaning it's insanely efficient. So yeah, all that diluted peroxide that you're drinking is totally deactivated within seconds. So really, you're just drinking water, but hey, it's important to stay hydrated, so you're doing something right, I guess. Secondly, hydrogen peroxide doesn't increase oxygen levels in your blood. Yeah, but, but you're wrong because uh, it makes oxygen from it, so uh, the oxygen is already in your body, and because it's in your body, it's in your blood, and uh, that's how it makes more oxygen uh, for, for your blood. Yeah. Okay, well, if you uh, let me talk. <clears throat> Something that you have to understand is that the oxygen from the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide and the oxygen that you breathe in from the atmosphere are not used by the body in the same way. When you inhale oxygen, it gets absorbed into your blood through your lungs. This oxygen then binds to red blood cells and gets transported throughout your body. Now, oxygen from hydrogen peroxide is used much differently. When you drink peroxide, it goes down your esophagus and into your stomach. Once there, it's converted into water and oxygen, either by the catalase enzyme or by stomach acids. The oxygen made from this is in a gaseous form, and like all gases in your stomach are... <clears throat> So it's not used at all. It's completely useless. There's no way for the oxygen to get into your bloodstream because gases don't get absorbed into your blood through your stomach. Only through your lungs. Sorry to ruin your day. Not really. But these are the facts. Breathing, smoking, and other air pollutants, as well as dehydration, all contribute to the deficiency of oxygen in the body. But there is a remedy for this. 
there is a cure. There is a substance that can be easily obtained and used. It is very inexpensive and it can cure almost any disease. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is hydrogen peroxide. In order to understand how hydrogen peroxide works, you need to first understand what hydrogen peroxide is. Okie doke! Hydrogen peroxide H2O2 is nothing more than water, H2O, with one extra oxygen atom. Well, and the fact that the second hydrogen atom isn't bound to the same oxygen, and the properties are vastly different, but eh, it's a decent description. Moving on. There are several grades and concentrations of hydrogen peroxide. There is a pharmaceutical grade, which is the grade you will find in the drugstore. This comes in a little brown bottle at a concentration of 3% hydrogen peroxide. The rest of it is purified water and added stabilizers. These stabilizers include chemicals such as phenol, sodium stannate, and tetrasodium phosphate. And even though this grade and percentage of H2O2 may seem great for cuts, burns, and mouthwash, it's garbage. Well, you know, the manufacturers put those stabilizers in there because they didn't think people would actually be drinking hydrogen peroxide. Much like how we never thought people would be eating bleach pods in 2018. But hey, you gotta thin out the herd somehow. Also, food grade 35% peroxide doesn't have stabilizers because it's in a higher concentration and will last longer than a 3% concentration. You can sanitize just about anything with this stuff. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. It's meant to be used as a sanitizer. You can use it internally to cleanse and heal yourself of almost any disease. Uh, no. This is grossly incorrect. Hydrogen peroxide doesn't kill bacteria or viruses inside your body. The only way it can kill a bacteria is by being directly exposed to it, like on a cut or on food. As said before, hydrogen peroxide is broken down in the body almost immediately into water and oxygen. The preserved molecule never makes it into your bloodstream. Besides, the best way to fight infection or disease is with a healthy immune system. I have done this protocol, and there are several variations of it. But this is basically how it's done. You take your 35% food grade hydrogen peroxide, an eyedropper, and 8 to 10 ounces of distilled water. You take your eyedropper, and you place one drop in your glass of distilled water. Hey man, I don't know if you took a second to do the math with this dilution stuff, but it's cool fam, I got you. So, one drop of 35% hydrogen peroxide into 9 ounces of distilled water dramatically dilutes the peroxide from 35% down to 0.007%, which is 428 times weaker than the 3% solution you buy at the drugstore. It's garbage. And even at the high end of 25 drops per 9 ounces of water, it's only at 0.16%. Still 18 times weaker than the 3% solution. This is already an incredibly weak concentration of hydrogen peroxide. And then when you factor in that it's enzymatically broken down once in the body, it's safe to say that virtually 0% of the hydrogen peroxide is left over to have any kind of effect, whether it be good, bad, or neutral on the body. You take your eyedropper and you place one drop in your glass of distilled water. Some people say you can start with three drops. Trust me, start with one. Before you drink this, you must make sure that there is nothing in your stomach. Hey, I'm just saying this, and you can take or leave it, but this protocol sounds more like a bunch of witches brewing a spell than a medical treatment. That means you're going to have to time yourself when you take this stuff, because you're going to need to do this at least twice a day. Each day, you increase the dosage by one drop per day. So the first day, it was one drop three times a day. You increased it to two drops three times a day. Three drops three times a day. Increase it by two drops per day, up until you get around 25 drops three times a day. Close to two weeks after that, you begin to do the protocol in reverse. I mean, when I get antibiotics, my doctor says just take one pill a day for a month. It's pretty cut and dry. So what you are doing is you are pumping up the oxygen levels in your blood and maintaining those levels. So your body has the time to use that extra oxygen to repair and heal you. True, you can increase blood oxygen by exercising, drinking more water, and maintaining a specific diet. However, drinking hydrogen peroxide as explained before does not increase blood oxygen at all. 
And even if it could, there's a limit as to how much oxygen can be in your blood. It's not like you can have 50% more oxygen in your blood than the average person. Too much or too little oxygen in your blood is bad. Your blood pH must stay at 7.4. Just a little high or a little low can be fatal. Too much oxygen raises the pH above 7.4, causing alkalosis. Your energy level goes up, you sleep better, your body burns fat faster, and you lose weight. Your eyesight improves. Your brain is highly oxygenated so you can think more clearly. Hmm, okay, do you have sources or mechanism explaining how? I've provided mine. Sayers who will suggest that this doesn't work, and or you end up damaging your body in the end. And I can tell you, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Never take advice from someone who clearly has not done the damn protocol. If I've never used penicillin, that doesn't mean I can tell someone, hey, I've never objectively used this as an antibiotic, and because of that, I can say that it doesn't work. No, I don't have to use it to confirm it works. Instead, I can cite literally 91 years of studies and experiments that prove it does work. This is something that hydrogen peroxide therapy lacks a lot of, sufficient, reproducible studies. Ozone therapy works. It has been proven to work countless times. Countless times, eh? Okay, great. Do you have a list of scientific papers or references that prove this? Any journals? No, there's no double-blind studies or large number of study participants. Nothing? Not even just like a one person besides yourself? Okay, well, um, then this is bullshit. Now, if you want to disregard everything I've said in this video, then the more power to you. But just know this one simple thing. Hydrogen peroxide is an oxidant. It causes oxidation to molecules, which is why it's so effective at killing bacteria. Fun fact, oxidation also causes cancer, which is why antioxidants are important to have in your diet, to prevent cancer. This is why you need to eat fruits and vegetables because they contain vitamins. And surprise, vitamins are antioxidants. On the stupid scale, hydrogen peroxide therapy is at a 6 out of 10. And on the harmful scale, it's at a 10 out of 10. As the average untrained person making and drinking their own dilutions of caustic 35% hydrogen peroxide just sounds like a trip to the ER. And just a quick shout out to my patrons for voting for this video and supporting my future projects. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.